Hello there, lovely folks of YouTube. Ren here, suffering in this July heat for you. It is hot out here, so I'm gonna try to make this kind of short. Honestly, I don't have a lot on this one anyway, but I did want to talk about this one. So when I made a video a little while ago about hyssop, hyssop officinalis, I had a lot of people asking me about a plant they had bought, which was labeled as hyssop, but was not. It was anis hyssop, which is Agastache funiculum. I have this plant behind me on my left, and the hyssop is actually just off, off of you right here on the right. So I'm gonna talk about the difference between these two plants, and then we'll talk a little bit about anise hyssop itself and what you can do with it. So I'm gonna give you a close-up look of both of these plants so you can kind of see the difference firsthand, so to speak. All right, so let's do that. Okay, so starting here, this is the hyssop or hyssopus officinalis. Those of you who have seen that video will notice that, yes, I have harvested this plant, which is why it's so short now. Um, there is one little flower spike there that still has popped up, but mostly it's just giving me new growth. The main thing I want to point out, of course, is the leaf shape here. You can see it has that elongated ovate leaf, um, very smooth margins, um, and then when you kind of brush against the foliage, it has a very sort of medicinal herbal smell, um, kind of like a Ricola cough drop, um, which is why, um, is because, well, uh, hyssop is actually one of the ingredients in a Ricola cough drop. So, um, so this is the hyssop. Now, we go right over here. This is the anise hyssop. You can see the leaf is very different. Um, sort of a triangular, almost heart-shaped leaf has toothed margins to it. Um, they do grow on opposite sides like each other. They have the same square stems. They're both in that Lamiaceae family, which is sort of the um, most commonly known as the mint family. So they have similar flowers to each other and they similarly have square stems, but the leaves are very different. This plant, of course, when you brush up against it, has a very distinctive sort of sweet licorice smell to it, which is why it gets its name, anise hyssop. Um, licorice mint is also one of the common names for this plant. So now that you've gotten more of a close-up of the differences between these two plants and what they look like, let's actually talk about growing them. So anise hyssop, this one here, uh, the agastache, is native to the Americas, which is why we don't have a lot of the old herbal knowledge. You won't find it in places like um, Culpeper's herb or anything like that because they didn't even know it existed. Um, it does grow in zones four to nine. It's typically a fairly short-lived perennial, likes the sun, but will withstand part shade, tends to get a little more leggy in the shade. Um, this will readily self-seed. So even though each individual plant only lives for a few years, the, um, it will just keep popping up new plants if it likes that place. It, you'll just have more and more agastache popping up continually. This is the first year that I've planted these in this spot. I'm hoping they like this spot. They didn't like my previous spot and they wouldn't grow there. So, um, and if you do grow it from seed, uh, the seeds do require light to germinate. So just keep that in mind. Um, but it's very easy to grow from seed. It's also very easy to grow from cuttings. You can take one of these little cuttings here, just like you would any a lot of the other mint plants, and just root it either in some rooting medium or even in water, um, and then grow it that way. Um, this plant very much benefits from pruning. So I'm actually filming this now. I'm going to prune these later in the day, or maybe tomorrow, right after sun, you know, after the dew, one or the other. Um, once they flower like this, you want to cut them back by about a third. And then wherever you cut them, you can see like on these little stems here, where there's like two little baby leaves there, those two little baby leaves will grow two new stems. So for each stem that you cut, you'll get two more stems. The more you cut it, the bushier this plant gets. It's very much like basil in that respect. So it definitely benefits from pruning. Um, this plant is very attractive to bees. I'm actually kind of surprised. We haven't had a lot of bees this year. Normally, when the bees find this plant, they are swarming it. They are all over it. Um, it's also super delicious in tea. It's one that I have a hard time keeping in my cupboard because my kids always go through it like crazy. It's their favorite. Um, so most plants in the Lamiaceae family are considered to be under the dominion of Venus. Um, this one, however, has some very strong mercury influences to it. Um, 
the fragrance itself is kind of a clue. Like the mercury has a very particular sort of camphorous sort of smell to it, and that's definitely present in this plant. Um, there were several tribes, native tribes here in the um, what's now the United States that used this plant in magic and medicine. Um, usually it was used to um, sort of relieve a heavy or dispirited heart um, in medicinal charms um, and also as um, a protective plant. So you could use it sort of um, to elevate the mood, um, in healing or in protection. Um, interestingly enough, we do have some information about the flower essence of this plant. If you're not familiar with flower essences, it's basically where you just sort of steep the flowers in water and then you use that water, typically amended with an alcohol in order to preserve it, um, as sort of a um, vibrational remedy. Um, the flower essence for um, anisysop is said to open honest communication um, and also to alleviate anxiety. So um, those are both real big mercury influences right there. Um, so yeah honestly the main reason i use this is just for its taste it is delicious it's delicious but if you're having issues with communication if you're having issues with anxiety depression things like that um it wouldn't hurt to kind of throw this plant into some sort of magical charm that you're making in order to help alleviate those issues or just you know make one of my favorite uses for this honestly um anisysop and lemon balm in a tea right before i took a test with a little a little pinch of rosemary or some rosemary oil on your wrist to smell got me through so many tests when I was in nursing school so <laughs> that's my hot tip for you but yeah that's basically all I have like I said there's not a whole lot of traditional uses so we're just kind of like flying by the seat of our pants on this one um, making it up as we go because that's a lot of the times what we're doing here with a lot of these correspondences they're sort of unverified personal gnosis until many multiple people agree with that and then it becomes sort of semi-verified and that's how all of our magical herbal knowledge came about so take what i have build on it and forward it to the next generation because that's all that we can do all right that's all i have for you on this lovely little plant i hope this video finds you well and i will see you again soon